that is the best Marvel TV series they have made yet. What is going on, guys? Your boy Ooze back in once again. And here is yet another, I guess you could consider it a review, my thoughts, impressions, whatever. But I did a review reaction impressions video after the first episode of the Loki series, since we're not doing like reactions from each week. Um, maybe that might be a thing for future TV series, like what if that's coming up. So if that's something you guys want to see, definitely let me know in the comments but as far as loki goes we are here the finale just happened i finally just watched it and uh wow a lot to take in a lot to absorb and a lot to look forward to now i'm not i'm gonna do my best to just kind of keep it cool while i do this video because man was i screaming earlier it was all warranted because it just backs up every little bit of a feeling that I've had with the MCU, the direction that everything has been obviously leading towards, and the fact to see it happening before our very eyes, like we're getting that official closure. The finale was so good, and the possibilities, like I keep saying, all right, the possibilities being endless, right, just actually became official by that i just want to kind of not waste any of your guys time i'm going to try to keep this video as short as i possibly can um without i don't know going on too many tangents or whatnot but expect there to be spoilers i will let you guys know that right off the bat it's going to be very hard and challenging to not spill any of the events that happened within this episode but considering that um yeah there is a lot to talk about let's just get right into it so the finale is essentially just a very dialogue heavy episode there's really not all that much action but honestly it didn't even need it it was the exact thing i expected out of the finale for loki loki was essentially setting itself up to be the show out of all of these marvel tv cinematic shows right that are adding on to the the bigger story of the entire mcu or should we now start calling it the mcm the marvel cinematic multiverse let's face it that's literally what we're getting ourselves into so of course they're going into to finally um meet whoever is actually behind the tva and behind all this timeline crap and whatnot and we finally meet that person it's actually not a loki it's kang the conqueror now the one thing i do appreciate about this episode is that they didn't even actually officially say this dude's name but the way that they wrote this and the way this dude delivered his lines and i gotta say again i'm very bad with my actor names but this actor played this role so well i was so into his character and i'm not even gonna lie guys i before this episode i really have nothing i know nothing about kang <laughs> i have known nothing about kang besides him being a conqueror but out of that entire conversation that he had with both loki's well with loki and sylvie it was such a pleasure to, to just listen to the dialogue back and forth his explanation of how everything was and the fact that they were just so like very like uneasy they didn't know whether to trust him or whether to you know just try to like attack him full force and that was it like the theme of this episode entirely not even just the episode and here's like my thoughts i'm sorry if i'm like kind of rambling already but i will do my best to kind of keep this as structured as possible loki has been a show a, a, a kind of about self-reflection and acceptance and denial and whatnot and what's crazy is that he essentially learns to love himself but it's in it's in the weirdest way possible he literally loves himself through a variant who's of course a female and they do have a moment where they finally do kiss now that part was a little weird just because it's like bro you're like literally falling in love with yourself but i think that's kind of like the deeper message here is that that's exactly what's going on with that happening i felt like it made sense as weird as it was but i mean let, let's just let's just keep talking about the kang stuff so with kang telling the loki's like the entire truth of how everything came to be and we're learning a little bit more about his background story i was just like literally so intrigued i don't even feel like i feel like i didn't even blink during that entire segment and he, he goes on to say that this dude's from the 31st century and that he discovered how time works and he was doing all this crap and then to one day he realized that there was like an infinite amount of universes and that there's a plenty of different variants that are him of course and that he is clearly the the best one and 
it becomes almost like a power struggle without the struggle part. Because then the conversation essentially turned into him telling them that all of this that was happening, that conversation was essentially meant to happen and that he already knew what was happening up to a very certain threshold. And they actually experienced that threshold happening to where he actually didn't know what was going to come next. But I feel like since this dude was so smart, I figured he already knew that if whether they killed him or not, he was of essentially going to see them again, whether it was him, him or another variant, because the cycle is just going to continue. And I feel like that's also another bigger takeaway is that no matter what they do, because you guys got to remember stories that deal with time are very convoluted and sometimes it can be very confusing and i'm trust me i can understand that full heartedly if you guys were having struggle or, or having some struggles with understanding don't even worry about it because sometimes i seem to question some things every now and then but i digress i really do feel like that with everything that he was talking about to them he was essentially trying to give up his throne to one of them because he was tired of I guess dealing with it and experiencing just going through the infinite amount of you know, scenarios and options and it's just it's almost weird because Doctor Strange literally saw a bunch of outcomes when it came to battling Thanos. So I can only imagine what this dude who's literally seen every single outcome of every single person it seems like that is very exhausting and tiring. This dude seemed so nice but he was just like yo like I'm tired. Like, cause Loki was like, why would you give up this kind of power? And he's like, I'm just, I'm just tired. Kang seems like a very simple man, even though he's very sophisticated. And obviously because, you know, I mean, he's been in part, uh, like a part of all of this time and all these different infinite universes. But let me now go into why I feel like Loki is the greatest show of all time. And it is simply for the fact that it is this show that exemplified. It showed us visually how there are now an infinite amount of possibilities that could very much now happen within the MCU. I'll I'll I'll, I'll stick to what we already know, but realistically, it's the it's the Marvel Cinematic Multiverse now. When you think about it from the the long term, right? You think about how everything started. You see how all the changes kind of happened, whether it was meant to happen or not meant to happen. With the, the things that I'm talking about, when they were not meant to happen, like let's say for example, some of the actor changes. Even though there were only a few, there were some characters like the Hulk's character, the War Machine. Those characters, it's a you know, go off the top of my head, were changed throughout the course of this MCU. However. Now that we have established that there is a multiverse going on and there's variants and all these different possibilities, they could literally take this and go into any direction they want. It, this not only sets up the obvious where we're going to see multiple Spider-Man actors for Spider-Man 3 no way home this doesn't just set up the obvious upcoming fantastic four and x-men but the fact is it almost seems like kevin feige and everyone behind the planning of this it's like the stars aligned perfectly for them because now they have all the cards in their hand to essentially just write in whomever they want at any point in time whether they want to act like they were already always there or because of all of these variant timelines these nexus events that took place this will easily be not even a cop out this is the best way to explain things that should have always already been there and some of those things that i'm obviously referring to are certain moments in time where we should have had certain characters that were obviously never a part of the specific stories. One example I can give you guys right off the top of my head is the Civil War situation. Let me tell you, out of all of the millions of different Marvel comics that there are, and I'm gonna be completely honest, I have probably read a small percentage of what's available. But Civil War was one of those things that I actually read, um, including Avengers vs. X-Men. And obviously you guys get to what I'm alluding to is that X-Men characters, specifically Wolverine, Cyclops, Storm, like Magneto, like these kind of characters have been so pivotal and super crucial in, in these big time stories within the comic books in Marvel 
that they've had to adapt and make their own variations, right? And what happens when you break a universe or when you make all these nexus events and then when I'm sure that somebody or some a group of people are going to inevitably try to fix things and put them back the way they were. When you break something, even when you fix it, it's not always gonna be perfect the way it once was. And with those cracks, I feel like those cracks are gonna probably come with some you know, some adamantium claws, some freaking eye beaming jaws, and some storm hailing, if you feel what I'm saying. It just, when the more you think about it and the more you realize how perfect this is, like this was almost a blessing in disguise. Everything that we would always complain about or just even mention like how, man, I wish Wolverine was here. I mean, I wish Deadpool was in this part, of, you know, at this phase of, you know, all of these Marvel films, this should have happened, this should have happened. I mean, even in the reverse, even going with how Fox handled their movies. I mean, look at Old Man Logan. Old Man Logan is, a, is, is literally a direct adaptation off of the, I think it was like a four issue special where it was like the death of Wolverine. Those comics have other Marvel characters that, Obviously, they had no, you know, they, they had nothing to uh, bring about, you know. However, now that they, of course, have those acquisitions because Disney, you know, owns everything. They now could even rewrite all that stuff, especially considering how, I don't know if y'all are aware, my man Hugh Jackman already sliding in those teases now i'm not gonna go off on a tangent too much when it comes to that but that is probably another video in and of itself that i could talk about but i just want you guys to understand marvel has set themselves up in the best position possible I'm, i guess you could just say marvel studios realistically because again we have been used to working with what we've got and over time slowly adding more acquisitions and they've been doing it in with such flawless flawless victory i don't make me make, make this sound like a mortal kombat game but each addition that they've had over time it just seems like it, it was all meant to happen this way and now the fact that all these years later disney now owns the fox characters we already have confirmation that there will be a fantastic four movie the mutants from x-men will eventually get involved i mean dude we are gonna see them in a matter of time i would be i i I would be so surprised. I'll be very happy if we even get a slight tease. If I see a single Fantastic Four reference or an X-Men character or a Deadpool, somebody out of Fox win in What If? Ooh, 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 I'm ready. I, I am so friggin' ready. All I gotta say is, uh, last but not least, Loki finale was an amazing episode and it made me actually go watch a kang the conqueror video afterwards to kind of educate myself a little bit more on that and oh by the way kang's actual name um his last name is uh richards you know like you know like reed richards it's happening it's happening loki so far like i said in the start of the video has been the best tv series that marvel studios has put out so far in my specific order in my opinion i say loki then wandavision and then winter soldier they're all amazing but for the obvious reasons that loki just literally blew the possibilities and the worlds out of proportion to where it's just like they left us on a huge cliffhanger because now this is like kind of perfect to kind of transition into the what if because what if is completely all over the place as it is on purpose whatever happens after that I feel like we're going to be in the best timeline in real life watching all of these shows and movies come together. So let me know what you guys thought about the Loki finale, all of your thoughts going forward. How do you imagine certain characters and certain angles that maybe haven't been seen yet? How do you expect them to make their appearances? I really would love to read all of your theories. And maybe if there's a bunch of them, I might do a video of the best theories going forward now that we are literally in the MCM and no longer just in the MCU. We are in the Marvel Cinematic Multiverse. Like, share, subscribe. As always, guys, hit me up on Twitter. All that good stuff supporting links will be in the description. As always, make sure you guys are taking care of yourselves. May the power protect you. Keep it locked loaded right here on this channel. Stay safe, stay clean, and stay the hell inside. I'll see you guys next time.